You know I wish I was presented live on the internet. Where can I find a Jupiter at night? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Hey there, J-Man. Hi. Hey, you know, it's our Thursday episode. You know what I like to do on Thursdays? We look forward to the weekend. And there is one thing and one thing only on my mind for this Sleep. weekend. Well, that's what okay, should be two on my things mind. On <laughs> two <laughs> things on my mind. No, gaming. Yeah? Yeah, between, we have a gaming-packed weekend. Uh, tomorrow, and I just want to get this at the top of the show, tomorrow, Lotso will be live at the same time Jupiter Night is at 8 p.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. and we're playing the free-to-play champions online game now. We're yeah. going to do an online gameplay event. That'll be great. And we're going to get involved in the chat, and we're going to group up. And so Because it's free-to-play, so basically anybody yeah. that wants to can but join in. I wanted to tell you right away, that way you got a chance to download it, and you're going to have to patch it. Mm -hmm. And then also on Saturday, we're going to be playing Stoked Like Crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, I might even tr be trying this on Saturday morning. Tell me about this. This is the Peregrine Gaming Club. Now, I actually reviewed this over at 10 ton hammer yeah i link published in the a show review. notes yeah at the bottom of the show notes there's a link to that but uh joining us as a special guest tonight is actually the inventor of the peregrine and cto of iron will innovations brent buyer arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> to broadcasting <laughs> Well, we thought, you know, this, we actually saw this, we first got our hands in this thing two years ago at PAX, Yeah, and both Jeremy and I liked it quite a bit, and so no. it's kind of a treat to get you on the show, Yeah, and so it's a good opportunity okay. to talk to you about this. So tell us about this thing. Sure. Um, Do you well, have like a, a like a 10 second elevator pitch? You can tell yeah, us all us about it. On it. You betcha. You betcha. So this is a wearable interface by touching the tips and joints of my fingers with my thumb or any of these other activator pads. It triggers hotkeys in in your game or application. And it's it's really that simple. It really is, and that it shows simple. up as a keyboard device over USB, and yeah. uh, it's got this neat uh, the interface on it just pops right off for easy uh, you know maneuverability when you're trying to get up from your desk or yeah. something. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks. So we got a couple of questions. We thought maybe we'd bounce off you. Yeah. Fire away. Well, first of all, I think. Um, if you've seen my uh, my review, one of the major problems that I've had with this so far is trying to type with it. And I was wondering if there's any response that you might have had to that. Is it just a learning curve kind of thing? or Well, or is uh, you know, the good question. The learning curve is part of it. Like, uh, I've been using the product for years in various prototype stages and now the final stage. And, uh, you know, you, you do get used to it, but it also depends on your keyboard. Like if you've got a smaller laptop keyboard, it will be a bit harder to type on. Mm, uh, yeah. Some some people adjust to it and some some people don't. Yeah. Hmm. Now, can you tell me what, what is the actual fabric that this is made of? Because I know it's really durable and it breathes really nice. Is this just like a standard nylon? Or I would what? say my experience was your hand doesn't like, you, uh, the nice thing is I had it on for a little while and there was like not really a sweat issue or anything. It's kind of no. gross to say, but I like, <laughs> I didn't get like nasty hand or anything like that. It seemed no, to stay. I mean, it's vented all along the fingers and yeah. the main, yeah. you know, killer yeah. points of the hand and everything. Yeah. Gonna sweat in this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's actually no special magic. It's got lycra and spandex, a, a mix of the two. Mm -hmm. And you can see we put ventilation. These, this is actually a thin mesh uh, over certain points in the hand. Yeah, yeah. It's nice that you and, can give us more of a close-up than I can. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that works out well. That's and what's cool, cool about it is uh, it actually, we found it kind of mix, uh, wicks away the heat and the moisture from your hand. So, mm -hmm. you know, your mouse hand is against just a, a non-porous plastic and it'll get pretty sweaty. But yeah, your glove hand, it'll wick the moisture away. And if it does get, you know, a little... Uh, a little funky, you can always wash your glove uh, under warm soap and water. Now, Brent, I know one of the number one comments we're going to get is it reminds people of the lineage to, of the Power Glove. Is there an inspiration of the Power Glove in this? Oh, just one second. Okay. <laughs> oh, we've got... Well, wow, did we offend him? He just got up and walked away. <laughs> I'm out of here. He's gone. <laughs> well, you know, actually, the Power Glove had a terrible history. Well, I don't know. I thought the Power Glove was cool. I, I guess it was cool. It wasn't like a, you wouldn't consider it a successful. No, like, but they only ever made two games that supported the Power I Glove. I love the idea, though. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Oh wait, sorry. That's R two D two. Oh, there you go. You have the Power Glove. Okay, so it there was. It just happens to be in my office. I got it in a storage box. So yeah, that is great. So there was some inspiration there. Well, uh, actually, I had seen the Power Glove as a kid. Yeah. And the, the inspiration from this actually came from uh, just the frustration I had over using a Palm Pilot years ago. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the stylus was just a very, I thought it was a very poor interface. 
And uh, yeah, I was out for a walk one night, laid on my bed, and this idea just hit me. And uh, I'd always felt it was like a like a spark of divine inspiration to to make this uh, this way for people to interact just by touching their touching their fingers. I'm curious, what made you call it the peregrine? That's a bird of prey. Yeah, uh, well, the peregrine is the world's fastest animal, and uh, we figured you know it's light, it's fast, it's deadly, and it eats mice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not, okay. <laughs> now, are, are you are you? I see this, and the first thing I think of is MMO game playing. Did you, when you, when you built this for gaming, or did you have a specific? Was it was it gaming in mind, like a specific type of gameplay, or was it any any interface on the computer? Because honestly, another use we kind of had for this that we thought could be handy is I have a uh, camera switcher here on my uh, on my desk that I use during the show to switch mm-hmm. between our various shots. And I thought, you know, this is a USB device. I could probably map the different camera shots to different touch points on the glove while I'm doing the show. Yeah. And yep. that could be really cool. So it's so w- was it gaming that was the problem you were trying to solve or was it anything practical purpose? It was actually the first thing I wanted to use it for was typing. To to be oh, really? <laughs> completely honest is two gloves to type with. Mm. And uh, you know, I trained myself to do uh, over 50 words a minute just by using two gloves to type like this. No kidding. It was really cool, really cool. Um, I can show you guys later some of our earlier prototypes, like ones I made by hand years ago. But, you showed uh, those to us on uh, to me on our previous call. They look like something made by the Borg. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big it's wires cool. running all over the, your arms. Oh, and neat. Um, <laughs> but uh, what happened was just we found the learning curve. Like as I was looking at the first market to take this to, the learning curve to type with this was, you know, it's it's kind of like learning to type on your keyboard again. It takes it's a while. Yeah. yeah. But games are great because uh, it's a simple set of commands usually. And, uh, you know, gamers have a really good aptitude for memorizing a lot of, like, keystrokes and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the first game that really convinced me was uh, Dota, Defense of the Ancients, the, the Warcraft 3 mod. Which is actually well, the game that I got to play at PAX with this. Yeah. Uh, uh, right off the bat. And it worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tremendous for Dota. And now there's games like uh, cool. Heroes of New Earth, League of Legends. Uh, Dota 2.0 is coming out. And then, of course, uh, MMOs. I wasn't into Warcraft at the time. You know, I've played it a bit since then. But the MMO crowd got a hold of it, and they really like it. I got to tell you, Brent, the uh, chat room that we have here uh, live with us is digging on the idea of two of these gloves. Now, is it only uh, only one-handed right now? Well, we're only selling the left-hand one yeah. right now uh, commercially. Okay. But we've had lots of requests for a right-handed version. Are you guys just You guys are just getting going? With the with the, with the commercial aspect of it, yeah, we've we've only been on the market about ten months. Okay, all right, okay. Now, yeah, also, when we saw you, you were still in the you were still yeah. beta phases. Yep. Okay, that's cool. So I wasn't sure exactly how that worked out because all right, now we should say so. Where do if somebody wants to find out more about this, what's your website? Where would they go? Uh, www.theperegrine.com. The uh, Peregrine. We'll have a link in our show notes yeah. too. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll show like you can see there's our. There's our logo and all that stuff. Nice. So, how you spell Peregrine? Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the software and the pod because yeah. I did have one question. Now, the the software called Glovebox. First of all, I I want to commend you for making it extremely intuitive and easy to use. The software uh, Gloveboxes. Yeah. Mm. It's it's really just like you, you see a picture of your glove on the screen. You click on a thing you want to map, oh. and then you press the button you want it to be. It's yep. really yep. simple, and a really cool feature of that is that it stores those profiles that you create on the pod. No. Yeah. So you can go over to another place, for example, and uh-huh. you don't have to. Oh, now so is it actual? Does it like so? Does it actually send the keyboard commands from the pod? Or yeah, it- which also means that yep. like when you if you snap this off and go and make yourself a sandwich or something, this is always on. Your OS doesn't have that annoying or pop ups yeah, showing yeah. you that you've lost a device or you need or you need to reconnect or anything like that. This is always on, so your OS sees that it's always on. It just can't receive any commands without being attached to the glove. That's it's kind of like, cool. Like Chris mentioned earlier, really nice magnetic, magnetic just snap, yeah. snaps right yeah. in there. Yeah, it has a really good feel. Like if you've ever used a, a MagSafe adapter on the Apple Notebooks, yeah. it's a very similar feel to uh, to that. Now, mm-hmm. once I pop that pod off, I can also wash the glove, right? Yeah. Yeah, we recommend like uh, obviously don't machine wash it, but just take it under uh, warm soap and water and just kind of wash it as if you were washing your hand. Yeah. And then, you know, rinse, rinse the soap off, let it dry, and it's, it's ready to go. Well, I was wondering about the pod. Uh, how much memory is in the sucker? Like, how many profiles can it store? 
So the pod itself will store five profiles uh, right on the actual pod. And I don't know if you knew this either, but uh, we've got a detachable faceplate as well. Oh, neat. Yeah, I don't think that my review model came with any of those, Aww. but I saw it on the website. They're really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, you can just snap it right on there. And, you know, our limited edition kit with our pre-orders, we had like a gold plate, a, ba- a black plate, and then the standard chrome-looking yeah. plate. Yeah. I was wondering if it might be possible on a future model to store the glove box software right on there that it would install over oh, like USB. Oh, like a flash drive. Yeah. That, that would, just, would be sweet. Yeah. We actually played around with that idea of making it into like a, a flash drive right on the pod. Mm-hmm. Cuz glove box really isn't that big? No. Um yeah, that's that's a good idea. Honestly, what we're looking at and we'd love feedback from your viewers, uh we'd like to actually set up an online web app where whether you use Linux, Mac or Windows, you could go to the website and it would have like your profile, mm-hmm. but also any profiles people have made for your game. Uh it would have them ranked that there would be nice. basically like a, a profile community. Available yeah. for everybody right there. Well, and then the more popular profiles that keep getting downloaded, they'd be like, you could sort you could by rank that them. ranking. That would be really great. Be really that's, cool. a, that's a great idea. I'm looking, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing if you, if you can come do that? through with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just need some time to implement yeah, it. we got absolutely. a lot of ideas, but we're a fairly small like company. Small well, team. I, I got to tell you, the chat room is very much interested in this and they, uh, they're asking, cool. they would be willing to test this and try that out for you for, <laughs> if you just gave them all free. Oh clients. yeah, there you go. That's or even idea. like a group discount or something like that. We've, it's it's kind of like when you come on open where you give everybody cars. Right. <laughs> Gloves sure. for everybody. <laughs> uh, I, I like that because I think I, I play uh, Star Trek Online quite a bit and I'm going to be playing Champions and I could totally see mm-hmm. that. So th- I like the idea of storing the profiles You know the there. thing that I'm most interested in trying this uh, with is Diablo 3 when it comes out yeah. and uh, the Torchlight MMO when that comes out and yeah. Dungeon Siege 3 is coming out later yeah. too. I've played the, the regular Torchlight with this quite extensively. It's it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, nice. that sounds any, uh, great. Any follow up questions here before we uh, wrap this episode up? Because I, I don't. I think we've been on for a little bit. Yeah, actually, I've been watching the clock very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I just wanted to thank Brent for coming on with yeah. us. And uh, if anybody has any other questions, um, I'm sure you can either send them to us. I'll send them on to Brent, or head over to theperegrine.com. Yeah. Great work here. This is this has been this has been something I've personally been following for a while, and it's really exciting to yeah to see it out here. And congratulations, I, yeah, very yeah. cool. Thank you guys very much, and uh, it's a, an honor to be on your show. And you know, if uh, if we get some new new models, or are about to announce the right handed glove, or any <laughs> other cool go. stuff yeah. like that, stay we'll, in touch. Uh, Definitely yeah, let we'll us know. We'd love to talk about it. All right, yeah. everyone. Well, thanks so much for joining us on tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night. Now, Jupiter at Night's all done this week, but we'll be right back here next Tuesday, and we'd love to have you join us live. Just go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live, 8 p.m. Pacific. And until then, 